I believe most of us totally agree to say that the Archon Quest Caribbean in this patch 3.5 is totally amazing. There are a lot of things to unpack, and of course, it is about Kanria. As usual, typical Hoyovers, they drop the big lore, then leave with a bunch of puzzles and questions that need to be solved. But hey, at least what they drop is totally satisfying, right? Since it contains a lot of things, then this video will only focus on one particular topic, and that is about the mysterious voice, or to be exact, the sinner. Who is the mysterious voice? So today, we are gonna talk about several clues that we got from the quest and try to answer that one question. Without further ado, let's get started. First thing first, before we jump to assumption, speculation, or conclusion, how about we start to collect some clues to make things easier? So what clues do we get in the quest? There are six obvious clues. First, the mysterious voice is male voice, so it is he. Then, the voice can only be heard by the traveler. This is further reinforced by the fact that Ida doesn't know and rejects the by-name sinner for the mysterious voice. Dainsleaf knows who he is. The voice has connection to the abyss. Time, memories, and fate are not obstacles for this voice. And lastly, it call himself a sinner and I'm no god. With all of that in mind, then we can continue to speculate who he is. So far, from what I found in Genshin lore community, there are two popular opposite candidates, King Irmin and the second who came. We begin with the King Irmin theory. This theory starts with the clue that shows Denslave knows about a mysterious voice, or Denslave knows who he is. Since Denslave is from Kanria, then whoever this mysterious voice is should be from Kanria too. Otherwise, Denslave doesn't recognize it. This assumption is then reinforced by the title he has, namely a sinner, which is the same as what Kanria people have. Therefore, this mysterious voice is from Kanria. But who exactly? King Irmin being the best choice here not only because he is not a god, but also was the king of Kanria that has connection to Odin, which is the important part here. We know this because there are reference to it, specifically the items dropped by the Black Serpent Knight, Abyss Herald, and Abyss Lector, which all of them were part of Kanria. Therefore, whatever items they drop, it would most likely resemble their most respected higher up, in this context, the king of Kanria, Irmin. As you can see, these three items, Gloomy Statuette, Dark Statuette, and Deadly Statuette, are very similar to Odin's appearance, especially the one eye. Based on that, we can say that if King Irmin is similar to Odin. What makes it more interesting is the fact that in Norse mythology, Odin is told to sacrifice his eye in Mimir's well and then hang himself down on Yggdrasil branches to gain knowledge from the other world. And at the same time, he is also called the one eye Old Father, who sacrificed his eye in order to see everything that happens in the world. If we take that information to King Irmin, then we get the idea that number one, King Irmin sacrificed his eye or whatever it is to something beyond, which is the abyss, to gain knowledge from the other world, which makes him the sinner. And number two, King Irmin could have seen the traveler through the memories might have something to do with Ilmin Sotri, which can be based on the civil tweak description, the sage. Or, because of that forbidden knowledge, he became transcend into another thing which allows him to know bound to time, memories, and fate. Additionally, if we ignore the voice and focus more on the statement he said, then it has quite similar fashion to Deadly Statue description. Furthermore, the reason why he let Chow and Ida bow down to the crystal, not only because its aura brings peace for them, but could also possibly be because of their instinct to bow to their king. And as a result of all those things, the Mr. Voice is King Irmin. So everything checks out, right? Or is it? Well, it turns out there is another candidate, and that is the second who came. Let's see what it brings. This theory starts with the clue that tells us the mysterious voice has no obstacle against fate, memories, and time. 
Based on that alone, it seems like whoever it is should be an entity on the level or even higher than the gods, and not mere humans or some kind of king. Even if they can harness the abyss power, time, fate, memories could still affect on them. Also, as we have seen in the quest, the mysterious voice always keeps talking about fate and for some reason, with the blessing of the abyss, he can give an effect to Caliber fate and turn him into the loom of fate, which is kinda shocking, because at the end of Archon Quest in version of Genesis, we get the info from the mysterious lady voice who told us something like this. Unfortunately, the fate of Tevat cannot easily be changed. Perhaps a god may have a slim chance, but for anyone else, who can say? You see, the fate of Tevat is not something easy to change. Even if a god can change that, the chance is too low. If we need to pick an example, then Uka Devata and Sacred Sakura to Inazuma are one of them. Uka Devata can change her fate because of some complicated things going on with Irmiso 3. And Sacred Sakura 3 can save the fate of Inazuma because Raiden Makoto gets help from a higher entity. Is Star Wars. So, to change fate, we need either complicated things or get help from higher entity. Therefore, this mysterious voice should be an entity on the level of Istaroth, the Shade, or even beyond that. That is why the second who came arise and became the answer for that matter. In addition to that, the second who came may also bring and introduce the abyss power in the world of Teyvat because there are several descriptions in the game that are generally said like this. Based on that, the illusion, delusion, and breakthrough could potentially be the abyss power. And since the abyss power can affect the fate, it is normal for the heavens or in this case Primordia 1 or Celestia to fear of it. If mere mortals can change their own fate that easily by using abyss power, then Primordia 1 or Celestia lose their control over mortals which is a bet on their side. Also, as we have known together, Celestia Nails from the Heaven has power to ward off the Abyss power. To make things more interesting, the way Mysterious Voice explicitly called himself a sinner and I'm no god, which might be because he was labelled as such by someone else, could be Primordial One or Celestia. If we trace it more further, we can see the result of the war that Primordial One has faced. Remember Seven Dragon Sovereigns? Yeah, based on the book Before Sun and Moon, some of the dragon skin running and hiding far away to the ocean or dark sea territory until some of their descendants, dragon hairs, meet the Enconomians. So in theory, the second who came could have the same treatment. They were not killed or removed, but instead hiding somewhere in the far territory until they meet Kanria people and introduce to them, especially the royal family like the king, the abyss power. And at the end, the second who came potentially manipulates and used them to make revenge against Primordia 1 or Celestia. That is possibly why the cataclysm happened. And for the current moment, the second who came yet potentially used the abyss order to do the same thing, but in another way around like the Loom of Fate operation and build mechanized god, probably for their body, I guess? So yeah, there you are, the two most popular candidates. But are there still other candidates besides those two? Surprisingly, there are. I have at least three more candidates. Number one, Heart of Naberius. If you don't know, Heart of Naberius is an artifact discovered by Albedo and his master, Ryan Dothier deep in the heart of a dungeon. And you know what? This purple crystal could potentially a fragment of the heart of Naberius. Uniquely, Naberius is suspected to be a god based on the fact that this item's name is similar to the Chinese name for Genosis, Heart of God. Also, the name Naberius itself is a demon name in Ars Gosia, who takes the form of the three-headed dog or a raven. Naberius can make a man amiable and cunning in all arts, and special in rhetoric. Well, that is quite similar, right, to the mysterious voice description? Number 2, Avatar of the Abyss. 
it reminds me of Marana's avatar in Aranara Quest. It is possible to say that this purple crystal and the mysterious voice are the embodiment of the abyss. So basically, the abyss is not only about power, but also it's the entity itself. The abyss has its own consciousness. And number three, one of the abyss deities like seven archons that get sealed. The idea is, if in Teyvat there are seven archons that rule seven nation, there could also be seven deities in the abyss as a counter for that. And one of them is this purple crystal we met. So yeah, overall, all of these names or candidates are still pure speculation. There is still much information we might have in the future that can change our perspective now. At least, for the current moment, we can witness the mystery behind all of this. And there you go, all possible options for who the mysterious voice is or the sinner is. Please comment below, did you guys enjoy the latest patch Archon Quest Calibre? Does what you think align with the theory that is represented in this video? Or do you have a better idea or some additional notes to the theory? Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please a like and subscribe as well as hit the bell icon to stay updated on my videos. Hello Zen here, and see you in the next videos. Bye.